Welcome, brothers and sisters, even as you join me on this beautiful day for the study of the Word of God. I would like to quickly take you through a recap of our last study. Firstly, we continued on other details of the garment of Aaron and his sons. There was the Urim and Tumim that were to be on the breastplate of judgment and were something to do with determining the will of God. On the helm of the rope of the ephod, there were to be golden bells and pomegranates. They speak of witness and of bearing fruit, both of which should attest Christ's believing individuals. The sound of the bells was also to be the sign of Aaron's well-being when he approaches God. There was also to be an engraving on a pure gold that was to be on his forehead, the words which read, Holiness to the Lord. Then garments were also to be arranged for Aaron's sons, that neither Aaron nor his sons will ever be naked before God. Secondly, we studied on the consecration of the priests. Aaron and his sons were to put their hands on a young bull as a sign of identification that the bull was taking their place. This young bull and two rams were to be sacrificed to first cleanse the priests. The priests then were washed in regeneration and finally were to be clothed by Moses. It was only then that they were anointed and consecrated for God's service and were allowed to eat the breast of the ram and Aaron's consecration. Meanwhile, we were taught that consecration for a believer is nothing that he does for himself. It is something that God does for him. It rests upon the finished work of Christ. Dear friends, with those reviews, I welcome you to today's study of Through the Bible. Dear friends, welcome to another episode of Through the Bible. Today we are listening about the altar of incense, the ransomed, redeemed and the cleansing of the people who would be his worshippers. God bless you as you listen. Chapter 30 The Altar of Incense This is the great worship chapter. In looking at the first compartment of the tabernacle proper, the holy place, we see three articles of furniture, all speak of worship. We have already considered the lampstand and the table of showbread, but there is also an altar here. It is the altar of incense. The table of showbread and the golden lampstand typify God's people meeting and fellowshipping together. This is not where you meet together and gossip, but where you feed on the person of Jesus Christ. It is a banquet. The altar of incense is the place of prayer. Exodus 30, 1-2 And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon. Of shittim wood shalt thou make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four square shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof. The horns thereof shall be of the same. The instructions tell us that this was a small altar. Exodus 33-4 And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, the top thereof and the sides thereof round about and the horns thereof, and thou shalt make unto it a crown of gold round about. The two golden rings shalt thou make to it under the crown of it, by the two corners thereof. Upon the two sides of it shalt thou make it, and they shall be for places for the staves to bear it withal. Even the small piece of furniture had rings, so that staves could be put through them, and it could be carried upon the shoulders of the priest. In the book of Numbers, we are told on the wilderness march, the Levites carried the articles of furniture. Exodus 36 And thou shalt put it before the veil, that is, by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat, that is, over the testimony, where I will meet with thee. This altar was placed right by the veil, and the ark and mercy seat were on the other side of the veil. It stood in the holy place, the place of worship. Exodus 37-8 and Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning. When he dresseth the lamps, he shall burn incense upon it. And when Aaron lighted the lamps at even, he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generation. This was not an altar of sacrifice. Exodus 13.9 He shall offer no strange incense thereon, no burnt sacrifice, nor meat offering, neither shall he pour drink offering thereon. Only incense and only a certain kind of incense was to be placed upon this altar. The priests would go in and burn incense every time they would light the lamps of the lampstand. This altar speaks of prayer. 
And we know this because the Bible uses incense as a symbol of prayer and praise in many places. David, for example, in Psalms 141.2 says, Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense. The book of Revelation gives us this picture of incense. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Revelation 8, 3 Luke 1, 9 tells us that according to the custom of the priest's office, his, that is Zechariah's lot, was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Zacharias was a member of the tribe of Levi and he served in the temple. He was serving at the altar of incense according to this verse and it was at the time of prayer. Dr. Luke opens the New Testament chronologically with Zacharias at the altar of incense. In other words, God broke his silence of 400 years at the altar of incense by giving a message to Zacharias there. Incense thereof is a figure of the Lord Jesus Christ, our intercessor. Aaron ministered in the place of worship and Aaron is a figure of Christ in this particular sense. Although Christ is actually a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 7 In Hebrews 9, we find a strange thing. The altar of incense is placed in the Holy of Holies. It looks as if the writer of Hebrews didn't know where it belonged. Why did he locate it in the Holy of Holies rather than in the holy place as it is in Exodus? Because when he wrote, the veil had been rent in two. Christ had offered himself down here. His flesh had been rent and he had died upon the cross. But he ascended back to heaven and the altar of incense is in heaven today. We come to God through Jesus Christ. He is our great intercessor. Christ is in heaven and the altar speaks of the place where he stands. When we come to God in prayer, we have to come through the Lord Jesus Christ. We hear a lot of people say, Now that I am saved, I can go directly to God. No, you cannot. You go to God through Christ. He is the one who brings us into the presence of God. Christ is in heaven, praying for us. It was wonderful for the children of Israel to know that their high priest was in the tabernacle, at the altar of incense, praying for them. It is wonderful for us to know that Jesus Christ, our great high priest, is praying for us. Christ does not pray for the world. Did you know that? In his high priestly prayer, he says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. John 17, 9 You say, why doesn't he pray for the world? Jesus Christ died for the world. The Holy Spirit is down here to make the offer of Christ real to those who will receive him. Christ could not do more than die for the sins of the world. He is in heaven praying for those who have received him as Savior. I am glad that he is doing this because if he were not, we could not accomplish very much on earth. What a precious thing it is to have a great high priest who prays for us. God hears our prayers because of who Christ is and what he did for us on the cross. Ephesians 1 6 says, To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, because of Jesus Christ, God the Father accepts us in the beloved. In Matthew 17 5, Mark 9 7, and Luke 9.35, God the Father said, This is my beloved Son, hear Him. We are not only to hear Him, we are to pray through Him. Jesus Christ told us in John 14.14, 14, If we shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. This is what it means to pray in the Spirit. You will notice that this altar is separated from the other articles of furniture. Only the priest could worship here. Even King Uzziah was smitten with leprosy when he tried to intrude here. 2 Chronicles 26, 16-21 Only priests can pray today, and even true believers in Christ is a priest. There is a great deal of sentimental rubbish told around today that a person can lead any sort of sinful life he pleases, reject Christ, and then in time of trouble, perhaps when his mother is in the hospital, this reprobate can get on his knees before God and expect an answer. Movies have shown scenes like this, and some sentimental preachers talk about such things happening. But God says he will not answer prayers like this. Let us be very careful about this, friends. The altar of incense is where priests go. The only prayer a sinner can pray is, God be merciful to me, a sinner. God will hear and answer that prayer when it is offered to him. 
verses 8 tells us that there is to be a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. There is to be continual praise to God. In 1 Thessalonians, we are told to pray without ceasing. The incense was to be upon the altar in the morning and the evening. When the high priest went inside and offered incense on the altar, he spent some time in the tabernacle. The incense stayed upon his garments, and when he came outside, the people could smell him. You might say that he was wearing the right kind of fragrance. When the great high priest walked by, people caught the fragrance. They said, My, doesn't he smell good? The trouble with most saints today is that they are not wearing the right kind of cologne. The right cologne is prayer. Let your prayers ascend before God as sweet incense and it will permeate your garments if you spend time in prayer. The ransom may worship. Exodus 30, 12-13 When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Lord. When thou numberest them, that there may be no plague among them when thou numberest them. This they shall give, every one that passeth among them that are numbered. Half a shekel, after the shekel of the sanctuary, a shekel is twenty geras, and half a shekel shall be the offering of the Lord. This is the second requirement of worship. There will be no plague among them because they are going to be redeemed. They were to be ransomed with silver. Silver is the metal of redemption and a type of redemption. Every one that worshipped had to be redeemed. We hear a great deal today about public worship. Actually, there is no such thing. Only the redeemed can worship. But the way is open to whosoever will for redemption. The cleansed may worship. Not only must worshippers be redeemed, they must also be cleansed. That brings us to the laver. The laver is located in the outer court and is made of brass along with the brazen altar. This is where God settles the sin question and where he deals with our sin. The brazen labor is where God deals with our sins as saints. Saints sometimes sin. The idea that saints are heavenly is just not true. As one anonymous poet has said, To dwell above with saints in love, Oh, that will be glory. But to stay below with saints I know. That is another story. Exodus 30, 17-20 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Thou shalt also make a labor of brass, and his foot also of brass, to wash withal. And thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water, that they die not. Or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn offering, made by fire unto the Lord. The priest could not come into the tabernacle to serve unless he had first washed. The priest got contaminated when he was on the outside. When you go to church and do not enjoy the service, maybe it is not just because the preacher is dull, maybe you are a dirty saint. When you have the combination of a dull preacher and a dirty saint, you do not have a very exciting service. We get dirty in this world and we cannot worship until we are cleansed. That is why the Lord washed the disciples' feet. He is still doing that today. We need to go to the labor, friends. That is the first thing the priest did. If they were going to the brazen altar, they washed before and after. If they were going into the holy place, they washed before they came in and washed when they came out. I am of the opinion that the matter of washing was very important. It was so important, in fact, that I can imagine one priest saying to another priest at the labor, How many times have you been here today? The other priest might reply nearly a dozen times. And the first priest would say, Well, I have been here over a dozen times. And look at my hands. I have dishpan hands because I have washed so much. I wonder why God wants us to do this so often. And Aaron standing in the background may have said, The Lord wants you to wash and wash and wash so that you will know that you have to be holy. Let's close here, dear friends. The Lord wants us to know that we need to be holy. And so I hope that we are always willing to be washed by the blood of the Lamb and then live as Jesus did. God bless you as you continue to grow into His likeness. Dear friends, you would have realized by now that entering the tabernacle, the representation of the temple that was to be later built by Solomon, was no small matter. 
It was God's attempt to bring himself down to dwell amongst us. The great I am, that unapproachable divine, was now to tabernacle amongst his people. It was that close until Jesus, who was God himself, walked amongst us, knowing all our pain and struggles, physical, emotional, mental and spiritual, he underwent through them all. The veil, the ark, the altar, all signify the Son of God, who stood in between us and God, so that we would not be consumed by God's holiness and greatness. Later in the exactness of time, appointed by God himself, Jesus laid down his life on the cross that God's anger be removed and we be accepted into God's family eternally. Today, dear brothers and sisters, we have the righteousness of Jesus through which we can, without any inhibition, approach God. As Jesus himself sits beside the Father, interceding on our behalf, always for our good, Enriched with these blessings, dear friends, God bless you more and more, even as you make the presence of Jesus brighter and brighter in your lives. God bless you. Mm -hmm.